Praise God. I want to talk about the ministry of touch. Somebody help me. Thank you. The ministry of touch. This love of God is not empathic. It means it is not in a place that it doesn't touch. Now listen. I gave you an example all ago. Then I say, look on them in the eyes. Your eyes are to touch with love. The words of your mouth are to touch with love. Your hands and arms that you embrace are to touch with love. And the feeling of your heart is to touch with love. Not indifference, but to love because he loved us. His love dwelling in us. And so you understand, charity is God's affectionate love. Affection means to touch with feeling. Somebody said, I heard said, well, we can't walk by faith and feeling too. Where did you ever hear that? I don't know about you, but the scripture says in Acts that happily I'd be happy as I feel after the Lord. Let me tell you, your spiritual feelings are what senses the anointing. Amen. What is the anointing? It's the Holy Ghost and power of God. That's Acts 10.38. You've got to have spiritual feelings and feel after the presence of the Lord. If you don't feel His presence at home, then don't you get upset? I can't drive in a car and they're playing worldly and godly music because I want to feel the presence of the Lord. I want to feel. I'm not past all feeling. The Bible said them people's dead. Are you dead? We gotta have some feeling in the church. Feel after the Lord. Feel His presence. Don't be satisfied when there's no presence from the Lord and you cannot feel His presence. Feel after the Lord in your home, in your car, wherever you are. You gotta feel His presence. The feelings are the spiritual senses of the heart. What did he say? Love the Lord. The part of your heart. Oh, a little bit of your strength. Oh, yeah. huh? A portion of your soul. Oh, yeah. Everybody say all. Oh. All. Oh. 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 What is this? God mean what he says? Yes. Hallelujah. But let me tell you the second commandment. You don't love one another. What? As I have loved you and I thought about that. We say those words. But understanding, I am called by God, commanded by God as you are, to love me and me to love you like Jesus loved us. The same kind of Holy Ghost, hallelujah, love. But we satisfy, we make excuse and say it's okay, it's not okay. Not okay. Uh -huh. There's a love. There's just love. I hear the thought, well, I did that. I said that to the Lord. And he said that word to me. Oh. Can you honestly say you love him with all? And you love your neighbor as yourself as Jesus loved? And I said, Lord, I'm going to be honest. The pastor preached this morning about the truth making us free. I said, I'm going to be honest with myself. I'm not walking down the street in Salem and they're laying the sick out, hoping my shadow's going to touch them. How about you? Come on. Why do you think there were such great miracles, so many healings everywhere the Lord went? Because he operated in that affectionate love of God, he cared. The Bible said he was moved with compassion. I said, Lord, I need your love. I need your love. Fill me, Lord, with greater love. Your greater love. 
We need the love of God in this church. Amen. It hasn't been here. It's been here only in a portion. But not to the place. I've seen visitor after visitor come and sit there and just look and not touch. Beloved, God wants the love of God in this church. And I've been in churches like that. Whenever visitors came in, the Bible says in Corinthians, amen, they'll fall down on their face saying, God is in you. Because they feel his love. They feel his love. His love should show fill the atmosphere of the church, the house of the Lord. That when the stranger comes. You ever been in churches like that? You didn't know anybody and you just visit and you sat there and all of a sudden the presence of the Lord was so great. And the tears just start, just burst out of your eyes. Just, and, and you're really not worshiping or doing, you're just sitting there in the atmosphere. The presence of his love. That's what God wants in this house. Anybody in agreement with that? Because he wants to start bringing people in off the street. He worked on us, me included. He's working on all of us, trying to get us to that place to not say, I got it, when we ain't got it. Come on, I'm talking, amen, to the prophet uh, and, and the pastors. And the ministers. I ain't got what he says I'm gonna have, but I want it. I want it. I desire it. I desire it. I said the Lord give us the desires of your heart. What is the desire of your heart? Bigger house, fancier car, more money. What is it? My desire is I want more of this life. More of this life. Now don't misunderstand me. God wants to bless you. Don't understand. Don't misunderstand what I'm saying. God's been good to me. I've owned beautiful homes, businesses, all that. But you know what? The thing we're to seek after is this charity, this affection. That's what we need more of. And so the Lord dealt with me. I'm not going to preach much more. Amen. I got all kind of scripture here. Amen. And we read that, but it says, can you read that for me? You know, so remember, he, Jesus, entered into villages or cities or countries. They laid the sick in the street and besought Jesus that they might touch if it were but the border of his garment. And as many as touched him were made whole. We got to touch him. And as you touch the Lord with all of your heart, asking the Holy Ghost to help you, shed abroad this love of God that you can touch the Lord. You're going to touch others, and when they touch you, and you touch them, something's going to happen. Hallelujah. I'm trying to tell you, it doesn't all reside in faith, but faith that works by love. Let's get it right. Come on. Love often will heal people. And I, I, I'm going to share one example. Okay, brother, you want to come? There's one more big one up there, the, the real big one. We're going to get to that one in just a moment. Don't show them because they'll be distracted. <laughs> the greatest miracle in my life, the greatest healing. I didn't even know God healed people today. I didn't ask for healing. Think about the centurion serving, laying there sick, dying. Did he call on Jesus? For our scripture says, we don't know. No. Did, was he in the presence of Jesus? No. Did the apostles or anybody come and lay hands on him? No. But his the centurion interceded. And Jesus spoke the word and the servant was healed. I was in that altar service. The pastor, the evangelist, Never knew. I only visited there one time. But the love of God was so great. I went in the altar and all I was doing was repenting of sin. Some of you just need to repent of this fear. This hardness. This barrier. And I just repented of that to the Lord. 
And guess what? Hands came right inside of me. And the Lord turned my organs all around and he healed me. Just from repenting from sin. Didn't ask for healing. Didn't know God still healed. Nobody laying hands on me. Hallelujah. Just saying, Jesus, forgive me. And he healed me. But let me tell you, when I said that to say this, I felt those hands. And there was so much love flowing through me. God touches us with his affection. We feel his affection. Beloved, we should feel the love of God, his affection to one another. Hallelujah. Somebody say amen or oh me. Now we're going to have communion tonight. Holy Ghost showed me this. I asked the bishop. He said, go ahead. Never done it this way before. First time. But the Holy Ghost showed me to do something to help our understanding. The bread is going to be there. Hold on. Now. Get back in a minute. But you're not going to be served. You're going to go up and you're going to tear a piece of the bread. What does the bread represent? His body. His body was torn for you. Say his body, his body. was torn for me. for me. His body was sacrificed. And then we know his blood. But there's a scripture that says he is the vine. We're the branches. How many feel like you're a branch? That went over somebody's head right there, but that's all right. Hallelujah. Well, what's on the branch? Fruit of the Spirit. Everybody say it's not my fruit. It's not my fruit. The scripture says fruit of the Holy Spirit. You see, you can do nothing of your own self. You cannot. You can't even bear fruit of the Spirit by yourself. It is Jesus in you and his blood flowing through you. He's the vine, you're the branch, and you bear much fruit. If his love dwells in you, that's what the scripture says. So this love, this charity, this affectionate love is going to abide in us. And then guess what? We're going to bear much fruit. Fruit of the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the Holy Spirit cannot be explained away. It overwhelms darkness. It overwhelms the fears of men. It overwhelms, amen, all that would keep people separate. How many know the devil wants to separate? The Bible talks about those that separate are sensual and devilish. Come on. But what does this love of God do? It draws us together as one in unity. Draws us together. How do they see what God is doing in this church? Amen. Hallelujah. God, open your eyes and let you see in the heavens. Hallelujah. God is using even the children because the love of God is in them. One of my grandchildren had a dream about you and praying for you. Hallelujah. God is knitting, everybody say, the Lord, the Lord is knitting us together yes. in, love. in love. So that we're going to stand, above all stand, as Bishop preached this morning, we're going to stand in faith that works by love. We're going to love one another no matter what hell is thrown at the church, no matter what hell is thrown at us, individually or in practice, we're going to sail. We're going to sail right over the top. And some of y'all, amen, if you've got a wife or a husband that's out there, you need to give them a Holy Ghost hug. You need to sit down beside them and stop criticizing and then whatever they're doing that's wrong and just hold their hand. Say, I love you. Come on. Oh, come on. Come on. Brother, the love of God will do more. Hallelujah. Than we can even imagine. 
Now we're going to, I'm going to show this scripture to you. Hallelujah. Spiritual love. Everybody go to Psalms 2 and 12. We're getting out there. But how many know you're a spirit being? You're not just flesh and blood. You're a spirit being. That means eternal. Hallelujah. God's Holy Spirit in you is eternal. What He's doing in you is eternal. And He's calling you to be filled with His love that is eternal. And operate in His love. Somebody read it for me. It's got a, I got the mic here. Can read it for me. And it is the Son, lest He be angry and He perish from the way when his wrath is kindled but a little. Blessed are all they that put their trust in him. When's the last time you kissed the son? Come on. My God. I'm trying to help him understand something. We've not only not been affectionate to one another, we haven't been affectionate to him. You act like Jesus is so far off. But I'm here to tell you, he's here tonight. Amen. The Bible says the Lord walks among his churches. He's here. How do you kiss the son? How do you give him an embrace? You want to just hand it to you? You better kiss him. I'm going to give you the secret. And as much as you have done to the least of one of these. Are you listening to me? You know we don't, in, in, in the European church, they kiss each other. We don't do it here because we're afraid, you know, somebody might be gay. Or has got some kind of disease. Or, shame on us. We talk about faith all the time. We can't even use our faith to be affectionate in love. When Joyce and I were in Africa, and they said, don't touch the lepers. Guess what? I said, if God wants to kill me with lepers, he's so be it. But I'm going to love these people. And Joyce and I hugged those lepers. Missionary said, you can't do that. I said, I'm going to do it. Are you getting this? In as much as you've done it to the least. What you need to do is find somebody that you really don't quite like their personality. And that's the person you might need to go and wash their feet. And maybe, and, and, and even like a woman, shed tears and wash the Lord's feet. You can shed tears in these altars, in your altar at home. And the Bible says that the Lord gathers your tears in his bottle and they're written in his birth. Hallelujah. Your tears are precious to the Lord. And you can wash his feet with your tears. Hallelujah. And you can kiss the sun. Hallelujah. When you greet one another with a holy hug and a holy kiss. Oh, Anybody getting this tonight? You're not to act like normal people in the world. You are not just a natural person. You're a spirit being. You're called be like the most high, to be his sons and his daughters, and to stand in love with one another. Amen. I'm not getting enough amen, so I need to preach some more. <laughs> and I said, Lord, I'm going to tell you a story. Brother, you better put it down because they're worried about kissing the son. <laughs> you better start kissing him. Unless he gets angry with you. Do you not think the Lord doesn't want your affection? Huh? Yeah, he does. Pastor the church, and we were running a little over 200 at that time. This lady came. Had to be over 500 pounds. She couldn't hardly get in. The thing is, she smelled so bad. This far away, three, four, five, you couldn't understand it. 
And she says to me, oh, pastor, I'm in religious self. She's shaking her hand. But my inward thought, she says to me, I'm looking for a church to go to. And my inward thought, I sure hope it's not this one. No, I know y'all don't have no evil thoughts. I know, I know your mind is pure. You don't have no evil thoughts. But I'm telling you what. God is letting us know people are going to come here that stink. People are going to come here drunk. Have out their mind on drugs. And you're going to look at them and, and want to show them the door. And God's saying to you, give them a big hug. Tell them I love you. Come on, hallelujah. We're going to get real around here. Because God wants to save souls. And we got to get a hold of this love that comes by the Holy Ghost. God's love shall have brought in our hearts by the Holy Ghost. Woo! I don't know about you, but I'm going to kiss Jesus. Amen. And him receive it. I want to wash his feet. I know about you. And I want to give him a big hug. Yes, yes. And I'll tell you, not too long ago, I lay on my bed crying. Yes. Tears rolling down. I said, Lord, how could you use me? I am such a mess. You know, we look over our past and our lives and where we messed up. And we get those thoughts sometimes. And I'm telling you, he embraced me with his love. It just overshadowed me. And all I could do was just keep on crying and saying, I know you love me and I love you, Jesus. Father, you know. I want you right now just lift your hands for a moment. Tell him from your heart. Talk to Jesus. He wants you to kiss him, to touch him. And you touch him with your heart, the feelings of your heart, with the words of your mouth. I love you, Lord. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. I love you. I'm going to ask at this time that the four ministers will come. We're going to do something different. These young ministers and Pastor Harris, they're going to stand up here. The communion is up on the communion table. They're going to stand. You can stand on one right there. And they're called, the Holy Ghost said, call them ministers of blessing. And the Holy Ghost said, we're going to have a feast of charity. I was somebody saying that. The Holy Ghost didn't tell me that. But anyway. But when you come up, if you want to take communion, they're just going to touch you and bless you. You know, Paul, in all the gospel, the letters they wrote, he always said, grace and peace be multiplied unto you. Amen. They're going to bless you. They're ministers of blessing as you're going forward to take communion. Now, you're going to take communion. It's a little different. But God wants you to understand when you partake of the bread, you're going to tear a piece of that bread off. That's his body. Given for you. You and I couldn't pay the price, but he did. And so you're going to take a little bit because it was your sin and my sin that caused him to be sacrificed by the Father. Father gave his son. And then the son shed his blood. And what we're doing different up there this time is how many know he's the vine, you're the branch, and to bear fruit. And you're going to pick, there's great vines up there. And you're going to pick the fruit of the vine, representing the blood flowing through, so that you can bear fruit of his spirit. In your communion, touch the Lord. I'm asking, when you go up there, don't do it in ritual form. But from your heart, know that He's looking at you. He 
is watching you. When you partake of the bread, the United States Father, thank you for giving your son for me. And as you partake of this body and then you partake of the fruit of the mind, I don't know that's where grape juice comes from in the wine hall. We're just getting it in the very beginning. And as you partake of that, thank you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. Make this personal. We don't need religion anymore. Let go of religion. Amen. He's risen. Bless yes, you, Lord. You're going to see him. You're going to touch him. Yes. But right now, he says, touch me. Yes. Yes. Right now, touch me. Yes. So you talk to the Father. They need some new spiritual strength. Amen. And when you partake and understand it's that blood of Jesus flowing in you that has sanctified you to the place the Holy Spirit can dwell in you. But went for the blood, he didn't dwell in you. But as he dwells in you, the Holy Spirit, guess what he produces? His fruit. Thank Jesus for his bloodshed. 